March 26. Kings defeated west of the Jordan. The following is a list of the kings that Joshua and the Israelite armies defeated on the west side of the Jordan. From Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir. Joshua gave this land to the tribes of Israel as their possession, including the hill country, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, the mountain slopes, the Judean wilderness, and the Negev. The people who lived in this region were the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. These are the kings Israel defeated, the king of Jericho, the king of Ai near Bethel, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, the king of Deber, the king of Geder, the king of Hormah, the king of Arad, the king of Libna, the king of Adullam, the king of Makeda, the king of Bethel, the king of Tapua, the king of Hefer, the king of Aphek, the king of Lasharon, the king of Madden, the king of Hazor, the king of Shimron Meron, the king of Akshaph, the king of Teanuk, the king of Megiddo, the king of Kedesh, the king of Jachnium in Carmel, the king of Dor in the town of Naphoth Dor, the king of Goyim in Gilgal, the king of Tirza. In all, 31 kings were defeated. The land yet to be conquered. When Joshua was an old man, the Lord said to him, You are growing old, and much land remains to be conquered. This is the territory that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and the Geshurites, and the larger territory of the Canaanites extending from the stream of Shihor on the border of Egypt northward to the boundary of Ekron. It includes the territory of the five Philistine rulers of Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. The land of the Avites in the south also remains to be conquered. In the north, the following area has not yet been conquered. All the land of the Canaanites, including Mira, which belongs to the Sidonians, stretching northward to Aphek on the border of the Amorites. The land of the Gebelites and all of the Lebanon mountain area to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Herban to Lebo Hamath, and all the hill country from Lebanon to Mizrafoth Maim, including all the land of the Sidonians. I myself will drive these people out of the land ahead of the Israelites. So be sure to give this land to Israel as a special possession, just as I have commanded you. Include all this territory as Israel's possession when you divide this land among the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. The land divided east of the Jordan. Half the tribe of Manasseh and the tribes of Reuben and Gad had already received their grants of land on the east side of the Jordan, for Moses, the servant of the Lord, had previously assigned this land to them. Their territory extended from Aror on the edge of the Arnon Gorge, including the town in the middle of the gorge, to the plain beyond Medeba, as far as Debon. It also included all the towns of King Sihon of the Amorites, who had reigned in Heshbon and extended as far as the borders of Ammon. It included Gilead, the territory of the kingdoms of Geshur and Mecha, all of Mount Hermon, all of Bashan as far as Salika, and all the territory of King Og of Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edri. King Og was the last of the Rephaites, for Moses had attacked them and driven them out. But the Israelites failed to drive out the people of Geshur and Mecha, so they continue to live among the Israelites to this day. An Inheritance for the Tribe of Levi Moses did not assign any allotment of land to the tribe of Levi. Instead, as the Lord had promised them, their allotment came from the offerings burned on the altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. The land given to the tribe of Reuben. Moses had assigned the following area to the clans of the tribe of Reuben. Their territory extended from Aror on the edge of the Arnon Gorge, including the town in the middle of the gorge, to the plain beyond Medeba. It included Heshbon and the other towns on the plain. Debon, Bamoth Baal, Beth Baal Meon, Jahaz, Ketamoth, Mephaeth, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zareth Shehar, on the hill above the valley, Beth Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshemoth. The land of Reuben also included all the towns of the plain and the entire kingdom of Sihon. Sihon was the Amorite king who had reigned in Heshbon and was killed by Moses along with the leaders of Midian, Evi, Rechom, Zur, Hur and Reba, princes living in the region who were allied with Sihon. The Israelites had also killed Balaam, son of Beor, who used magic to tell the future. 
The Jordan River marked the western boundary for the tribe of Reuben. The towns and their surrounding villages in this area were given as a homeland to the clans of the tribe of Reuben. The land given to the tribe of Gad. Moses had assigned the following area to the clans of the tribe of Gad. Their territory included Jazer, all the towns of Gilead, and half of the land of Ammon as far as the town of Aror, just west of Rabbah. It extended from Heshbon to Ramoth Mizpah and Betanim, and from Maenaim to Lodibar. In the valley were Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Succoth, Zaphon, and the rest of the kingdom of King Sihon of Heshbon. The western boundary ran along the Jordan River, extended as far north as the tip of the Sea of Galilee, and then turned eastward. The towns and their surrounding villages in this area were given as a homeland to the clans of the tribe of Gad. The land given to the half-tribe of Manasseh. Moses had assigned the following area to the clans of the half-tribe of Manasseh. Their territory extended from Maenaim, including all of Bashan, all the former kingdom of King Og, and the sixty towns of Jair in Bashan. It also included half of Gilead and King Og's royal cities of Ashtaroth and Edri. All of this was given to the clans of the descendants of Maker, who was Manasseh's son. These are the allotments Moses had made while he was on the plains of Moab across the Jordan River east of Jericho. But Moses gave no allotment of land to the tribe of Levi, for the Lord, the God of Israel, had promised that he himself would be their allotment. The land divided west of the Jordan. The remaining tribes of Israel received land in Canaan as allotted by Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the tribal leaders. These nine and a half tribes received their grants of land by means of sacred lots in accordance with the Lord's command through Moses. Moses had already given a grant of land to the two and a half tribes on the east side of the Jordan River, but he had given the Levites no such allotment. The descendants of Joseph had become two separate tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and the Levites were given no land at all, only towns to live in with surrounding pasture lands for their livestock and all their possessions. So the land was distributed in strict accordance with the Lord's commands to Moses. Caleb requests his land. A delegation from the tribe of Judah, led by Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, came to Joshua at Gilgal. Caleb said to Joshua, Remember what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, about you and me when we were at Kadesh Barnea. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land of Canaan. I returned and gave an honest report, but my brothers who went with me frightened the people from entering the promised land. For my part, I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. So that day Moses solemnly promised me, The land of Canaan on which you were just walking will be your grant of land and that of your descendants forever, because you wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well, as he promised for all these forty-five years since Moses made this promise, even while Israel wandered in the wilderness. Today I am eighty-five years old. I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey, and I can still travel and fight as well as I could then. So give me the hill country that the Lord promised me. You will remember that as scouts we found the descendants of Enoch living there in great walled towns. But if the Lord is with me, I will drive them out of the land, just as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave Hebron to him as his portion of land. Hebron still belongs to the descendants of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, because he wholeheartedly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Previously, Hebron had been called Kiriath Arba, it had been named after Arba, a great hero of the descendants of Anak. And the land had rest from war. The Land Given to the Tribe of Judah The allotment for the clans of the tribe of Judah reached southward to the border of Edom as far south as the wilderness of Zin. The southern boundary began at the south bay of the Dead Sea, ran south of Scorpion Pass into the wilderness of Zin, and then went south of Kadesh Barnea to Hezron. Then it went up to Adar, where it turned toward Karka. From there it passed to Asman until it finally reached the Brook of Egypt, which it followed to the Mediterranean Sea. This was their southern boundary. The eastern boundary extended along the Dead Sea to the mouth of the Jordan River. The northern boundary began at the bay where the Jordan River empties into the Dead Sea, went up from there to Beth Hogla, then proceeded north of Beth Ereba to the Stone of Bohan. Bohan was Reuben's son. 
From that point, it went through the valley of Achor to Deber, turning north toward Gilgal, which is across from the slopes of Edomim on the south side of the valley. From there, the boundary extended to the springs at En Shemesh and on to En Rogel. The boundary then passed through the valley of Ben Hinnom along the southern slopes of the Jebusites, where the city of Jerusalem is located. Then it went west to the top of the mountain above the valley of Hinnom and on up to the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. From there, the boundary extended from the top of the mountain to the spring at the waters of Nephtoah, and from there to the towns on Mount Ephron. Then it turned toward Baala, that is, kiriath Jerim. The boundary circled west of Baala to Mount Seir, passed along to the town of Kisalan on the northern slope of Mount Jerim, and went down to Beth Shemesh and on to Timnah. The boundary then proceeded to the slope of the hill north of Ekron, where it turned towards Shekiran and Mount Baala. It passed Jabneel and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. The western boundary was the shoreline of the Mediterranean Sea. These are the boundaries for the clans of the tribe of Judah. The land given to Caleb. The Lord commanded Joshua to assign some of Judah's territory to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So Caleb was given the town of Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, which had been named after Anak's ancestor. Caleb drove out the three groups of Anakites, the descendants of Shishai, Ahimen, and Telmai, the sons of Anak. From there he went to fight against the people living in the town of Deber, formerly called Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the one who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer. Othniel, the son of Caleb's brother Kenaz, was the one who conquered it, so Aksa became Othniel's wife. When Aksa married Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. As she got down off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What's the matter? She said, Give me another gift. You have already given me land in the Negev. Now please give me springs of water, too. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower 